Okay, the next spring type are what we call torsion springs. Now, they're different from compression and extension springs, only instead of compressing and pulling, what you're doing is you're turning. You're turning the legs. You're producing a torque which generates a force. Hi, my name is George Fournier. I work for Acme Monaco Corporation and my position there is Vice President of Engineering. Today, we're going to teach you how to make a better spring. A torque is consistent on the spring. The force depends on where it falls on the leg. Um, the definition of work is force times distance. So if you know what the torque is, you know what the distance is, you can calculate the force at any point on that spring. And all the material in a torsion spring is active. That means the coils and the leg lengths all contribute to the force. Um, and you have to take that into consideration when you're working on a torsion spring design. Another thing to take into consideration, uh, a torsion spring is designed to move in the direction in which it's wound. What you don't want to do is never, never move the coils away from the direction of wind because what happens is it creates undue stresses. The results you're going to get are very inaccurate and before you know it, you're going to destroy that spring because it will not be able to take that kind of motion. Now, as far as the stress levels go in a torsion spring, uh, you're not working with uh, torsion properties per se on a torsion spring. What you're working with on a torsion spring are bending properties. And bending properties on a torsion spring, any stress that's at least 75% of the minimum tensile strength or less is safe. At 75%, you could probably expect in a, in a, a static application maybe 100,000 cycles. As the stress levels go down, as they're reduced, the chances of improved cycle life are increased drastically and it doesn't take too much to reduce the stresses to increase your cycle life. To reduce stresses, there are a lot of things you can do. Uh, you you adjust, adjust the wire. You can go larger on the wire, however if you go larger on the wire that means you have to increase the coils but your stresses are lowered. So you have to allow enough room so that when you choose the wire size and the number of coils, everything falls into place. What I've seen in uh, customers' designs, and I don't always agree with, is that they specify forces at a deflection. And I have a problem with that because that's not actually what happens in its assembly in its assembly it's at a position not a deflection so I can take a spring and deflect it and get the correct force but if I assemble it in a product and it moves to its position of which it was supposed to work you'll get a different force so that's why just like in compression springs and extension springs where you specify a force at a certain length you have to specify the torque on a torsion spring at a specified assembled angle, not a free position or a deflection. One other thing that you have to consider in a torsion spring, as you wind the torsion spring around, the diameter gets smaller. So if the spring works over a shaft, you have to make sure that as that spring rotates around, it doesn't contact that shaft because as soon as it contacts that shaft, you lose all your spring properties and it winds up being a clutch. While springs are often the least expensive part of your assembly, failure can bring costly machine downtime and product rejects. To assure higher quality and longer reliability, we offer a comprehensive spring design and analysis program and mechanical requirements, manufacturing feasibility, and in-use predictability. We are experts in compression, extension, torsion, and beam springs.